Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And we're taking a look at the Galaxy S9 Plus and the Pixel 2 XL. Now, quick note, I do have a bit of a skin at the top of mine. Uh, the glass that is up here, the only bit of glass on the back, I accidentally cracked a little bit of it, so that's why there's a bit of a different look with my Pixel 2 XL. Uh, but we will get into the design aspect in a second. I just want to remind everybody that I'm just giving my main takeaway thoughts here in this video. If you want to see the more in-depth comparison between these two, we have that and also a camera comparison available at androidauthority.com. There's also going to be a video for the camera comparison here, so you can stay tuned for that as well. Now, the main takeaways that I have between these two devices is that Samsung really tries to put as much as possible into their phones. And that's something that we've known for a while, but the differences or the omissions, if you will, have been a little bit more obvious this time around. The Pixel 2 XL, for example, doesn't have the glass on glass design. And because of that, there is no IP certification, but more to the point, there's no wireless charging. And while there aren't any extra buttons on the Pixel 2 XL compared to the Bixby button on the S9 Plus, you can squeeze the device to get straight to Google Assistant, which is pretty nice. Just sort of squeeze the device, it comes up really easily and uh, it's actually pretty convenient. But the other omissions are a little bit tougher to forgive, mainly the headphone jack. Now, without a headphone jack on the Pixel 2 XL, you have to use a USB-C adapter for your wired headphones. But in terms of the handling, the design between these two is very similar because the screens are about the same size. But I have to give some credit to the Infinity display. After all, the Infinity display just curves on the sides to bring uh, the screen down just that little bit to the device, makes it a little bit easier for you to go back and forth with it. But the flat side sides of the Pixel 2 XL uh, make it just that little bit tougher to maneuver in one hand. After all, you have to really slide the phone around and really it's a small difference, but it's something that is still noticeable. As everyone has been talking about, the fingerprint reader on the S9 Plus and on the S9 really has been put in a much better spot. So we can give uh, the S9 credit for that. And as you can see on the back here, there is a dual camera setup on here. And when we talk about the cameras in a little bit, the dual camera setup is a vastly different philosophy than the Pixel 2 XL. The Pixel 2 XL has been out for a little while now, so it does have that bit of a disadvantage because it has the Snapdragon 835 with four gigabytes of RAM, while the Snapdragon 845 is what you have in the S9 Plus and the S9 Plus also gets a bump up to six gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty nice. So there is a bit of a performance gap here, but it's not so wide. And also with the stock Android that's on the Pixel 2, uh, you should have reliable, speedy performance uh, throughout your time with it, uh, especially with this one that I've had, and I've had this thing for months. You also have Bixby, which is right here. I press the Bixby button over on the side and it takes me to the landing page where there are a lot of pieces of information here. Not only the top apps that you might wanna download, top apps that you use, but also feeds. Uh, you can also hold the Bixby button so that you can do voice commands. And one thing I will give Bixby some credit for is when you hold the button and you say something like, let me try that real quick. Open the camera and take a selfie. Right there. Done. One thing we took the picture. Oh, there you go. You have to tell me you did it. Sure. Anyway, <laughs> the follow up commands are really nice in Bixby. You are able to say the first part of a command and then do a follow up command. So depending on what you're looking to open up, uh, it will be able to follow through. Now that is something on top of an existing Google Assistant that you get in Android Oreo anyway, by holding down on the home button. So really it just comes down to how much you want to be able to do between these two devices, but there are a lot of the same multitasking features and there are a lot more features on the Galaxy S9 Plus that you may or may not find useful. So the core experience is always going to be reliable. For example, all of the extras include things like the Edge UX uh, over here on the side, uh, coming from the curve of the Infinity display. So you can access your most uh, contacted contacts, your most used applications, and there are a ton of options uh, inside of the settings area to customize customize the device. I even have a video, a 15 second video as my lock screen and the always on display of the S9 and the S9 Plus can be customized with a custom picture or logo in this case. And depending on your usage, the S9 Plus and the Pixel 2 XL have very similar capacities in their batteries and thus very similar battery life. There's only 20 more milliamp hours in this one, so really the experience has been largely the same. Uh, I can get a day or a day and a half from these two phones depending on what my usage is. But if you're a very heavy power user, power saving modes are important also. But the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus provides even more of those, including a really deep power saving mode where it turns off a lot of the features and only allows some 
applications to be opened at any given time. So if you really are a superpower user, you need your phone to last as long as possible. Samsung tries to make sure that that can happen. And finally, we can talk about the cameras, and there are two different philosophies at work here. Like I mentioned before, we did do a camera comparison between these two and a couple of other phones, uh, and we are going to provide that in a separate piece here at Android Authority. The main lens has an f1.5 aperture, and there are actual blades in there that stop down to f2.4, so you can take advantage of those two apertures if you know what you're doing. And then there's a telephoto lens that allows you a 2x optical zoom at f2.4 aperture itself. The Pixel 2 has a 12 megapixel camera on the rear and an 8 megapixel camera up front, but both of them have been treated to provide great processing based upon Google's massive database, machine learning, and all of that. All those buzzwords basically it means that all the photos that Google has amassed over the years can be used to provide the best possible processing for any given photo that you take. So even in low light shots, the Pixel 2 can provide very detailed photos, even if they're not perfectly exposed because of the lower specifications. And by that, I'm highlighting the S9's f1.5 aperture, which just does a great job of really lighting up a photo, even in really dark situations. And you can see the difference here. And it also provides a lot more options, including the super slow motion and also the AR emoji if you wanna have some extra fun with augmented reality emojis of yourself. Uh, but those are all things that we've covered in other videos as well. Where the Pixel 2 really shines is in its portrait mode, especially since on the front-facing camera you get the same processing where all of the data that Google uses helps to provide a proper cutout from the background and also provides great selfie photos. You've probably seen it already. There are a lot of people on Instagram and all over the place that use this phone and get some great front-facing camera portraits, uh, and selfies are just that much easier on this phone. However, there aren't really any extra enhancements to put on top of there, like on the Galaxy S9 Plus, like beauty modes, um, and also enhancements like uh, AR emoji and makeup. AR, uh, where you can actually put makeup on yourself in an augmented reality fashion so you can actually change kind of completely the way that you look. But really that's the takeaway between these two devices. The Galaxy S9 Plus just has basically everything plus the kitchen sink and you can pretty much ask it to do whatever you want and it probably has the tools to do it. But the Pixel 2 XL still provides that kind of Spartan experience. Something that's a little bit easier for those who don't really want too many tools because they don't need them. They know how to get their stuff done and even if you can get those same tasks done with the Galaxy S9 Plus, at least there's not a whole lot of extra clutter surrounding everything that you need. So what really matters here in this comparison and the reason why we wanted to take a look at these is because we wanted to ask you guys what you thought. You can get into the comments down below and talk about which one of these two phones you would pick. And you can also talk about this comparison if you have any questions at all. You can also let us know in the comments down below and we are going to uh, respond to those comments down there. But also some of the top comments might actually be used in a future piece of content. So make sure you stay tuned for that as well. So thank you guys very much for watching. I just wanted to give my quick thoughts on these two phones. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Android Authority YouTube channel. And if you're already a subscriber, head over to that subscription button and hit that bell on the side so you get notifications for times when we put content out, which is really often actually. So keep up with all of that and more by heading over to AndroidAuthority.com for all the coverage we've done on these two phones. If you needed more information, we have the separate reviews, but we also have a longer form comparison at AndroidAuthority.com for you to read. So keep it tuned here and remember that we are your source for all things. Android.